Isaiah chapter number 18, 666. 18th book in the Bible is Job. 42 months, 42 chapters. Return to captivity, but we're not talking about Job. Whoa! When the Bible says, whoa, as a horse is to do, you better stop. And you better find out what God has got your attention. To the land shadowing with wings. What kind of flight? Maybe that's a lot of birds. Which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. And you find this in Zephaniah 3.10. And... When you go to commentaries, Egypt, and all kinds of the Bible says beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So look up in a map somewhere, look up the rivers of Ethiopia, and somewhere beyond that. <clears throat> what are they doing? <coughs> that sendeth ambassadors by the sea. So sailors, navy men. Even in vessels of bulrushes. That is a cheap primitive building material. Bulrush is that stuff that grows in, in the marsh area upon the water saying go! Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Ye swift messengers. I don't think they're swift in the bulrushes. Once they get on their feet to a nation scattered and peeled. Peeled strip of skin, bald, or robbed. So they're going to a people who have been stripped down. You peel a peel off a of fruit. They come from the, the beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. There are navy people with cheap vessels. To a people terrible from their beginning hitherto. So there's a race of people that they're coming to and their origin and who they are are terrible. The sight terror. It could be terrible here as in remarkable. God is a terrible God. That doesn't mean God is wicked and mean. And that means he's just a wonderful beyond expression, beyond comprehensive, beyond describing but these people here could be terrible as in they're just wicked and vile from the beginning hitherto a nation meted that's measured limited out and trotted down they had been in losers no victory trotted down Jesus is going to come and trot down his enemies, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Flood. Spoiled means take everything they have. The, the rivers came up and took all they had. A great example of what we lived in our time is when we, that, um, I don't want to assume, in, in Japan over there. Tidal waves, but they, they have their own typhoon. When that body of water came into that city of Japan and just, I mean, you just watched it go down streets and around houses and alleyways, just washed away everything. There were valuable stuff probably washed away. They, they find today over in, in North America boats and, and all kinds of things that came from that, that Japan thing. You and you'll see the news reports with the Mississippi. This is all kinds of things that's being washed down. When we had the, the great floods and uh, the melting of snow up in, in Norwich and went to go see the uh, Antic River. Man, there were times we stood there on that bank. We watched uh, uh, the aluminum sheds. We watched water bottles. We watched all kinds of plastic jugs and everything just go right down to the fall. All ye inhabitants of the world. Uh oh. Now we're going universal. 
and dwellers on the earth. Uh oh, this is written to everyone. This part. See ye. Now, how can the Native Americans who are not, were not known, the Aztecs, the Mexicans, before they knew they were Mexicans, I'll tell you how they could do that today, television, CNN, live on the spot, here we are, ABC, NBC, all the networks that have news can show you something that happens on the other side of the world. When he lifted up his ensign, that's a sign, a, a flag, on the mountains. When he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. So what happens to this city is for all the world to see. For so the Lord said unto me, Isaiah, <coughs> I, God, will take my rest. God spoke of a rest when he created the, the heavens and earth. Chapter 3. That doesn't mean God's taking a nap. God's sleeping. And like the rest you find in Genesis 3, this is a rest that God just steps back and I don't know if he cracks his knuckles, but hmm. okay, looks good. Genesis 3. Everything looks good in that. Look at those beautiful wings. Look at those beautiful rings. Look at that planet one day. They'll say it's not a planet. Look at the grass. Little bugs hopping around. Little uh, get goes. It's beautiful. There's man and woman. Beautiful. I like that. This rest. I will take my rest. And I will consider in my dwelling place, God, heaven, like a clear heat upon herbs, like a cloud of dew in the heat of the harvest, death, destruction. So the rest here is God not giving help. You don't want God to rest in your life like that. You keep on going the way you're going. In wickedness and violence. God says, okay. I won't send no more prophets. I won't send my word to them. And I'm not going to help you. Can you imagine that moment when God tells a man to go jump in the lake of fire? He just takes his rest. Done with you. I'm all done. You don't want God to rest in your life. And we see that, uh, I got a note here, chapter 25, verses 3 through 5. For a four, that's in front, the harvest, when the bud is perfect. Oh, good. Started off good. They got a bud, they're producing. The sour grape is ripening in the flower. I don't know much about sour grapes, but it's spoken about here. It, it's got a flower. It's going to be. He shall both cut off the sprigs with a pruning hook. You don't want to do that if it's growing good. You go out. If you got a tree that's full of buds, it's springtime. You, that's one thing you don't do. You don't go cut all the buds off. You're not going to have a tree in the summer. That's life. God sits back. I'm not going to help you. You're going to be heat of herbs, wilted, dry. You're going to be a cloud of dew and a heat of harvest. It's, it's dead, drought. You're going to show signs of life, and I'm going to cut you off. And take away and cut down the branches. You need the branches. The branches, and I believe it's in the Gospel of John or Paul writes, the branches is what holds up the fruit. You cut off the branches, you ain't got no fruit. They become fruitless. And every man is to produce fruit. Even the Holy Spirit gives us fruit. Nine fruit. There's a fruit of wickedness, fruit of lustfulness. 
fruit of, of, of a wicked man. Our fruit is supposed to be good. Love thy neighbor. Witness and go in all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, live a respectable Bible life. Kai. Those are fruit. You sit down on a piece of paper. You write everything you do. And then you look at that fruit. Is it for God or is it for self? They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains. Hmm. And to the beasts of the earth. The cutting. And the fowl shall summer upon them. And all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. You can look at the corpse at Armageddon. When God says he calls the birds, I've got a great feast for you. Come and dine. The master calls, come and dine. The feast of the horses, the feast of the horsemen. Now, it said, it said mountain. Armageddon's a hill. And something about from the regions beyond the, uh, the rivers of Ethiopia. I'm not going to say I know this whole chapter. But be, a beast and falls are going to have a, a, a lunch. And if men are likened to trees, if men's likened to the flowers, and Israel's likened to a, a vineyard, the illustration here is man. God is going to turn them over to the enemy. In that time, shall the present, another note here, but I don't know. There it is. Oh, Psalm 68, 31, Isaiah 60, verse 1, and 62, verse 1. He be brought unto the Lord of hosts. That's a millennial passage. It's like in one of the minor prophets that if they don't bring anything to the Lord, they're not going to get rain. And we just read about the clear heat of the herbs. Death, cutting off the buds. He brought to the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled. They've been run off. They've been robbed. They've been stripped. And from a people terrible from their beginning here do. This is that place that these, uh, these, these ambassadors are sent to. From Africa. Well, I know a man in the Bible that came from Jerusalem on his way to, to Ethiopia, and he went back home with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's, that, I'm just saying, that's Ethiopia gets the gospel later. And I'm told by an Ethiopian... Uh, Missionary that they eat grass. That's all they can eat. Because they have turned on the Lord. To serve idols. And yet I've also was told by the Ethiopian missionary. They will travel three days to a Bible meeting. And when at noon you sit there at the pulpit. Or stand there at the pulpit. You close your Bible. Let's sit there. They look at you like. We didn't come for an hour message. We didn't walk three days and eat grass to come an hour. We want to hear it all day long. We want to be a Eutychus and fall out the window at midnight. And there's a hunger there in Ethiopia. And yet there is, like everywhere, there is sin. 
Imagine what that what that guy did when he went back to the queen with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> A nation meted out, measured out, and trodden underfoot. This is a repeat. This chapter repeats. Whose land the rivers have spoiled. Other desolation, uh, unvictory, death, famine, and in the end to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount. <coughs> Dying, forgive me. If you were to ask me, that's a millennial passage. That's a bunch of people that they're they're living not right. And a bunch of people around Ethiopia said, hey, I heard these people over there, they've been conquered or something. They ain't got no victory. Come with us to the Lord and be healed and be made right. I don't know. I don't know if that's the, that's the answer there. But whatever it is, there's a nation that has been trotted down. There are there there are losers. People come to them, and they end up at the end of the chapter showing up at the Lord Jesus Christ at Mount Zion, the Mount Zion. If you were to put that passage today, what's at Mount Zion? The Lord's not there. Yeah, but how many religions teach a pilgrimage? We go on a pilgrimage to the, this holy city. We go on a pilgrimage to a mountain, to this guru. And then you get there, and you know, you die in your sins and go to hell. But here is a pilgrimage after being defeated. That's the word I've been trying to think of. After being defeated. And you end up in a mountain where God is. Boy, Satan knows his Bible. He knows one day in order to get all your answers, you do have to go to a mountain. This, that guru, but the guru is Jesus Christ, God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. Satan is an imitation. Satan knows the Bible. And you need to realize one thing we do get from this chapter. Satan will get you to do the right thing at the wrong time. Everything that he brought before Jesus, the three temptations, was either at the end of the tribulation for the Jews, the millennium, or just God who he is. This chapter cannot be today because you cannot go to Mount Zion today and find the Lord. I'm not interested in Jerusalem. I, I, I would be very thankful if someone said, hey, here's plane tickets for your whole family. Here's hotel reservations. Hold your, go to the Holy uh, Land and all that and see. The, no, I, don't, I don't care. Because I know it's been perverted by the Roman Catholics. They're not going to show you biblically where Jesus was. They're not going to show you biblically where John the Baptist was. They don't know. And if you do, they'll bring you to some kind of shrine. But I know there's coming a period of this chapter here. I know there's coming a period that in Jerusalem, when the curse is removed, Jesus Christ will be rightfully seated upon David's throne. That's when I want to see Jerusalem. And I will. I'll be right behind Jesus all the way on horseback. So this is something that's coming up in the future. And it starts off with a woe. To the people that are sending in ambassadors. 
Woe to the land, shallow with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Egypt. Location. That sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bird rushes upon the waters, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled and people terrible. And you read down uh, verse 7. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts from a people scattered. Peel. These are the people that the ambassadors came to. They're the ones coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. The people who are, who are being sent in the ambassadors are the woes. Why? I don't know. Maybe they're trying to turn these people away from God. But that's not going to happen in a millennium. The woe is sent to those who are going to this nation that this nation will end up before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now maybe they will try to turn them away. I don't know. But there's two groups of people in this passage. One, they are the ambassadors. They're the, they're the ones sending people to this nation. And then there's a nation that's just been totally wiped away, destroyed. And, and they're going to come to God in hell. I don't have all the answers. 